you expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. A font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. I grew up with five younger sisters, so all the stuff you learn from brothers, I didn't learn that at home. Well, a little bit from Dad, but mostly from my uncles. And yes, even my uncle, Father Paul, in, in uh, Kearney. And one of the games that brothers like to play on their siblings is the mercy game. Taking a finger of an, or an arm of an unsuspecting victim and bending it in a way that God did not intend. As the hapless victim screams and yelps for pain, the brother calmly says, Say mercy. Well, the prideful siblings will wait and just continue to endure the pain as long as they can before saying mercy. But most immediately cry out, Mercy, mercy! What a cruel torture. Inflicting pain just to show dominance over through some supposed act of kindness. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Today we, as I said at the beginning, we do celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. It's the eighth day. Last week was Easter Sunday. St. Pope uh, John Paul II, new to say, um, wished to dedicate this Sunday to the divine mercy of God. So we celebrate also today Divine Mercy Sunday. And also, as I said, we have two new saints in our church. This morning, Pope Francis named John Paul II and John the Twenty-Third to the Roman Martyrology. He named them to the uh, communion of saints. So now we pray, St. John Paul II, St. John the Twenty-Third, pray for us. So, friends, as we gather on this Divine Mercy Sunday, we ask ourselves, what is Divine Mercy? Is God... Could God be like our older brother, just inflicting pain on us in our life so that we'll cry out for mercy, so that he can show his power over us? We know the story of our humanity. We know the story in our situation well. We were created by God. We fell. We sinned. God sent his Son who redeemed us in his death and resurrection. So why is there still evil? Why is there still sin? Why is there still decay and death? And why do we have to encounter it every day of our life? Didn't Jesus rise from the dead? I believe the key to divine mercy, the key to understanding all of this, maybe not understanding it, but encountering the mystery of it, comes from today's gospel encounter. Jesus pays a little post-resurrection post visit to the apostles. In fact, he visits them twice. And what does he say? What's the first thing he says when he walks into the upper room? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Jesus gives his peace to the apostles, to those who confess him as Lord. What is this peace that he's talking about? When we pray, we pray for peace, don't we? A lot of us, we pray for peace every day. We seek peace and freedom all around the world. Our country is great at trying to help those uh, around the world, those less fortunate, to have peace. We stand up in defense of others when someone begins a war. We seek out, we call out the peacekeepers when we see a lack of justice. One, one of our oceans is even called the Pacific Ocean, peaceful in character. We're a people of peace. We want peace. We desire it. It means to us an absence of violence, a calmness, and a quiet. And we try to build this peace around us. And every time, every time we can, even in our own lives, we try to build peace. But what's the peace that Jesus brings? Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus comes to stand in the midst of his apostles, what's happening outside that room in their condition? 
What's going on outside the upper room? Well, there's Roman occupation, which is supposed peace, but it's dominion of an empire, emperor. There's a bunch of Jewish zealots out there trying to overthrow the Roman government, so you can imagine that there's a lot of chaos in the streets. And there's Jewish leaders that are trying to put the apostles to death because they're proclaiming that Jesus rose from the dead. There's chaos outside. What's going on in their hearts? That same chaos. Jesus, their friend, their master, their Lord, the man that they walked with for three years, every day of their life for the last three years, they'd spent listening to him. He had died. They took him away and hung him on a tree. They didn't know what to do. They were confused. It wasn't right. This was the Savior of the world. Why did they take him away and kill him? And now on top of it, we got these crazy women coming back saying he's risen from the dead. What's happening? There's chaos in their hearts. Jesus gives them peace. It's not a peace that's going to take away those storms outside. You notice the Romans didn't just end their occupation when Jesus walked in and said, Peace, it's not magic. He didn't just do some magic act and everything goes away and all of a sudden gets nice and happy. Jesus gives them true peace. Jesus gives them a peace. And what is it? It's the love of God and a true inner joy in their heart. That's the peace He brings. We're created by God. We're created by God to desire and love Him with all our heart. But we can't do that. We're made to love God perfectly. But we can't do it. We fail. We're sinners. Jesus' death and resurrection was a perfect act of love. The perfect act that we couldn't do on our own. And through that act, what's restored? Our union with God. When Jesus gives his peace to the apostles, he's giving them what their soul is longing for, but can't attain because of their weakness. Peace by being in union with God. Jesus came, although the doors were locked and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Third time he said, Peace be with you. When we see death in the world, when we see a baby die from a birth defect, when we see a young mother die in giving birth, when we see teenagers killed by a drunk driver, when we see innocent women and children slaughtered and abused in war, we see domestic abuse all around us. When we, we see all these things and we cry out, why? Our heart weeps and we question. If God were merciful and just, those things wouldn't happen. We say, God can't be like this. God can't be that older brother who just punishes the innocent victim and, so that they see his dominance over them. But we need to see it through God's eyes. We need to see that even the, resur the, even the resurrected and glorified body of Jesus still has the wounds, still has the nail marks in his hands and feet and side. That's the glorified body and it still has wounds. Jesus is marked by the death he encountered, that he endured. He embraced that death to raise it up. The mission of Jesus wasn't to take us back to the Garden of Eden. The door Jesus opened by his cross and resurrection invites us into the very sanctuary of heaven. So much greater than the Garden of Eden. Now we have access to the face of the Father. We can look into the eyes of the unseen God. Jesus' cross and resurrection is the door of God's mercy. It's mercy because despite the fact that we're sinners, despite the fact that we are weak, God looks on us in love and invites us through the door of His mercy. We're no longer imprisoned by sin and death. The door is open. 
death, evil, and darkness, those realities, those realities are ever-present in our world. They're here and they're going to stay. They came into being because of our own free choice, the choice of our parents in the garden. And divine justice allows us to make that choice. We can walk through the door of mercy or we can turn our back on it. We can repent of our sinful ways and accept God's mercy in our life or not. God's not going to force us. But Jesus does say to us, Peace be with you. He breathes on us the divine love of the Father. And by giving us His peace, our hearts are strengthened to be humbled, to admit our faults and walk through the door of mercy. He offers us that which our heart longs for, the joy of union with God in heaven. Saints John Paul II and John the Twenty Third were not afraid of encountering and entering in the wo- into the wounds of Christ. Walking through the door of God's mercy, both suffered greatly in this life. Let us follow their humble example. Receive the peace of Christ today and embrace God's divine mercy. And we pray, eternal God, in whom mercy whom mercy is endless and the treasure of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Saints John Paul II, John the Twenty-Third, pray for us.